Alrighty, so I have had a few people on my channel ask me how I send my cold emails, um, and I wanted to make a video to show you how to send cold emails with Mixmax, which is the tool that I use. This is a question from people in my comment section as well as um, a guy who booked a coaching call with me wanted to know how to send cold emails with Mixmax. So I thought I'd just go in here and show you a sample. I'm not actually going to press send because I've already emailed these people before, um, and I actually emailed my list again recently. So this is just going to show you what to do once you follow the process. And by the way. If you wanna know how to actually get to this point where you have all of the companies that you need to reach out to, how to actually figure out who to reach out to, you know, how to um, find the, their, them, how to add them to the spreadsheet properly, how to find their, their websites, and more importantly, the, uh, the, the people you wanna actually reach and their emails and actually validate their emails. You can see these are all valid emails. None of them are gonna bounce. I have like a 0%, 1% bounce rate usually. So, um, that's actually in a training document that I have down below in the description you can grab. Click the link, it'll take you to a Google Doc with step-by-step -step videos. I should be charging for this, but it's free. Uh, you just put in your email, you receive it, and it will teach you everything you need to know about cold email lead generation. And if you still need help, you can actually book a call with me. Um, I'll leave a link down below in the description. You have to apply to book a free call with me, but um, if you qualify, then I will get on the phone and I can help you with your cold emails as well. So. That being said, let's jump into it. So now at this point, you should already have your, your list. So let's say I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna use a ton of people. We'll just use this list, but you can pretty much export as many people uh, as you wanna reach. Although I would keep your, your email outreach to max 50 people at a time. Um, I usually do 30 or 40 per domain per day um, because if, if you send more than that, you might hit Google spam filters um, and be marked as spam, which actually I, I think one of my emails was marked as spam recently, so I have to get a new domain, which is a real pain in the neck, so you wanna avoid that. So you want to take the companies you're gonna reach out to, and I always mark off who I've already emailed before. I should have the date though, but anyway, let's say I wanna email these 20 people, so I'm going to highlight all 20 of these companies, and then I'm just going to go over and I'm gonna copy all this information from all of them, okay? And then I'm gonna just add a new sheet here for now. And I'm going to paste one cell below the first row. That way I have, you have to label these as columns, right? So I'm gonna say company, website, position, first name, last name, email, first line, okay? So now when you upload this to Mixmax, you'll have some variables to pull from uh, as far as your cold email campaigns go. So for this campaign, I'm going to only be using the company names. I'm gonna use their first name, their email, and their first line. I'm actually not gonna use the position or website or anything like that. So I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. Um, one thing that you want to do is always double check your data before you email because the email tool is gonna to pull information from this spreadsheet and if you have any typos in your emails, um, in this in this cells, it will impact the way it looks. So even if you have like an extra space here, for example, it saves that space. So if you're trying to write an email that says hi name with a comma after, right? What's gonna happen is it's going to pull, it's gonna pull from, from here. It's gonna paste, let's say we're emailing Nick from the future forward. I actually booked a call with him, uh, cool guy. It's gonna just replace his, this variable with, with his name, right, for every single email. But if you replace it with a space in the data, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say this, it's gonna say, hi Liz, with a, with a, with a comma um, in front of the name, and this can be a problem, right? And this can also happen, that's one thing to look out for. So I would double check every single cell, make sure that there's no spaces afterwards, because you really need to have clean data. So do all that. You also want to, to check, for example, the company name. So you really don't wanna have, like some people will put like, Inc or like LLC or like they'll have it on all capitals like this. Like you don't want to be emailing people like this because this just doesn't look natural. No one, if you're, the whole point of cold email is to make it look like it's not a cold email. <laughs> you want to make it look like you're a friend reaching out. And that's why we use the first lines here. So if you have a very casual email, but then a robotic like RXM Creative LLC, it, it just doesn't sound good. It doesn't look good. It, it can really mess the data. So you just want to have a clean company name um, I'm gonna undo all these changes. You wanna have a clean company name like these. These are all good, proper capitalization and everything. Um, so once you're, and you also wanna double check your first lines and read through all of them, make sure that they're all proper with no typos, et cetera, they sound good. But once you have all the data good to go, I usually will delete the website position and last name columns because I don't need them for this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to file, download, CSV, okay? 
So now you have your sheet here. Next, we're gonna go into MixMax and we're going to create a folder. So I'll call this an example folder, but I usually will make my folders the niche that I'm reaching out to. So you can see here, I reach out to staffing companies, video companies, IT companies. So in this case, we're doing an example niche. These are agencies. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click a uh, new sequence and this is gonna pop up. So this is where you can add manually all the people or you can just drag and drop a CSV, which is what we're gonna do. So just drag and drop this right here over the CSV little um, icon and then we'll populate these the cells. Now you have to have, you can have any variable you want, uh, custom naming, but you have to have your, um, you have to have at least one column that says email and it can't say anything else. Cause if you just say, if you try and upload it, let me show you what happens when you try and upload it with, uh, without the email in the column, it'll just give you an error. It'll say like failed to import contacts, email header not found. So just make sure that you have email there. So now that you have this, you're good to go. So you're gonna click next edit stages. And this is where things get interesting. So the first thing you're gonna do is subject line. Um, this is gonna to have to do with your script and with your, you know, your, what you're testing out. So I usually have a separate document where I have all my scripts and everything. If you wanna see that video, let me know in the comments down below. I can make that. But for now, I'm just gonna make up a script and a subject line. So right now, I'll just say quick question because quick question works very well. And I'm gonna say, hi, name. Um, and then I'm gonna give them the first line. So what's gonna happen is it's going to pull the first line. Then I'm gonna say, I specialize in finding new clients for agencies. For example, I recently helped, and this is where you pull your case study, a relevant case study if you have one, uh, fueled uh, another agency, another agency, uh, book meetings with Nike, Adidas, and uh, Duncan Donuts in and they closed two million in about one year. I'll say within one year of working with us. All right. Um, can you take on more clients? Let me know and I'll send over a few times. Thanks, Jacob. And that's usually the script that I go with. Um, this is a very, this script has worked very well for me in this niche. So I just use it pretty much like, I always A-B test different things, but once I find something that's booking me solid meetings, I usually just stick with it until, you know, I just scale it up. Um, so this is a good script. This works well for me. And now we're gonna go through the follow-up sequence. So this is gonna be scheduled for as soon as possible. So once I click activate, there's one more step, but once I click activate and actually press and send, th this first email will go out right whenever I press it. So 11 a.m. right now, Eastern time. If I wanted to schedule this for another time, I could. I could click that and then I could go choose a start time and I could pick my date and my time here. Um, it's gonna start sending at 1 p.m. Eastern and finish at 2 p.m. So all these emails will go out within that hour. But I'm actually gonna send as soon as possible with this example. So now we're gonna add another stage. Actually, today's Friday and Fridays aren't that good for cold emails. So I'm gonna choose a start time of Tuesday and I'm gonna schedule Tuesday at 1 p.m. That works very well for me. Uh, 1, 1 to 2 p.m. So then what you can do is if this email does not receive a reply within two weekdays, you can send it again. Um, I usually will just do two days instead of two weekdays, or you can do hours, but don't don't follow up after two hours. That's way too soon. You don't want to pester people. I usually do two or three days. So I'll just say two days. If this first email goes out on a Tuesday, this next email will go out on a Thursday. And you always want to stagger the days of the week and the time that you send the email, because that way, you never know when people are going to be in their inbox. Um, sometimes people you know, check their email in the morning, sometimes people check it at nighttime, some people check it on the weekends, some people during the weekdays. Um, so you always wanna hit them when they're gonna be in their inbox, but you don't know when one person will be in their inbox. If you always email at the same day and same time, then maybe the person who checks their email at that day and time will see your email, but other people will not. However, if you stagger your emails at different times, you're always gonna, or hopefully the idea is you'll always land at the top of their inbox when they're about to check their email. Because typically when they're at the top of their inbox, when you're at the top of their inbox, they'll open your email. If you get buried towards the bottom, they might not see it or they'll just delete it because they're fatigued from going through all the emails. So this will help increase your open rate, which is incredibly important because if no one sees your email, then no one's going to respond and all of your work is wasted. 
So because we sent this on a Tuesday at 1 p.m., I'm gonna send this on a Thursday at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., so a bit earlier in the morning. And I'm just gonna send a quick bump email. Hi, first name. Um, following up on this to make sure it wasn't married. That's all you gotta say. Thanks. And what this is gonna do is it's going to literally bump this, and you send this as a reply always. It's gonna bump the thread at the top of their inbox. So they'll see this email. They'll be like, what is he following up on? They'll read this email again. It just kind of reiterates the value and the customization. This email works very well. Okay, next stage, we're gonna do a big win email. I'm gonna do that four days later after the, the follow-up. So the big win's gonna say, hey, first name, um, just had another win with uh, Dom and Tom, an agency in NYC. We helped them add one million in closed business within six months and they hit the ink 5,000 three times in a row. Um, what time works for you to chat? Would love to do something similar for you guys at company, okay? So this is always, what we're doing here is we're just pretty much studying another case study. We're always providing value. We're always talking about how we've helped people just like them solve their problems. And I know that agencies all have this problem. So this is a great way to get their attention again and always notice that I always have a call to action here as well. This video isn't always about isn't really about scripts though. It's more about um, how to actually use Mixmax. So the last stage we're going to do here is going to be the, the breakup email. And I didn't think I adjusted the time here. So four days later, this one I'll send in the evening, so five to six p.m. Excuse me. Um, and this one I'll send. I don't know. This one I'll do three or four p.m. I guess something like that. So all times of the day. So hey, hey there, first name. Uh, at this point, going to assume getting more clients for company isn't a priority for you now. But if that changes, whoops, please let me know because I'd love to help you, help you grow. Thanks, Jacob. All right, cool. So now the last step we have to do before we send it is to test these emails and make sure that they actually are uh, delivering properly and they're they're well written. They look good in the email inbox. You know, there's no last minute typos or anything like that. Um, and then we'll press send. It will be good to go. So I'm going to go and check my email. I have this thing called um, it is called Shift that helps me look at all my emails in one place. So here you can see them in the inbox. This says from me because I sent it to myself. If you send it to the client, it would have your name there. But here's the subject line. And you can see this is why we use first lines. Because, oh, actually, see, this is exactly why we need to do this. So there's an issue here. It says, hi, Liz. And then it says Liz again. So what did I do? Hi, hi, Liz. It must be the first line. Let me, let me pause this and figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is a classic example of exactly why you need to double check your emails. I almost just sent, I'm, I'm actually going to send this anyway because I, I, this is an example. But if I did send this, which I could have, it would have wasted all of these leads because it's now so obviously a cold email. Look what I did. I put first name twice instead of first line. Uh, first line should go here because first line is pulling data from this column. But I used her name twice, which is like, doesn't make any sense. And all these people would have had that. It would have been like, hi, John, John, hi, Liz, Liz. Like it wouldn't have made sense. So look at this email. It says, hi, Liz, Liz. If I didn't check this email, I would have not have caught this. So you always want to check. Um, instead of this, what I need to do is, is write first, not first name, first line. So if I send another test email, let's see what happens. That is a good catch, Jacob. I'm so glad that I made that mistake for you guys because now you can learn. See, hi, Liz. Read about you on the site and love your belief in the importance of human connection when it comes to building strong brands. That is such a good personalized compliment. It has nothing about me. The third word in the sentence is you. And then I use your again. So, and I mentioned something super specific. That's just so clearly a customized compliment. She'd have no idea this is generic. Next up, I go into the pitch and then I ask her for a meeting. Very simple, all right, next email. Following up on this to make sure it wasn't buried. Thanks, Jacob, looks good to me. Hi, Liz, just had another win with Dom and Tom, an agency in NYC. We helped them add one million in closed business within six months and they hit the ink 5,000 three times in a row. 
What time works for you to chat? Would love to do something similar for you guys at Pivot Design. Thanks, Jacob. Okay. Lastly, hey, Liz. At this point, I'm going to assume getting more clients for Pivot Design isn't a priority for you now. But if that changes, please let me know because I'd love to help you grow. Thanks, Jacob. That rhymes. I can do a rhyme anytime. All right, cool. So that all being said, now what we can do is now that we're good to go, click next, confirm and activate. I like to track clicks, even though I don't actually use any links in my email. Even my signature doesn't have a link. So I don't actually ever get clicks because I want them to just, the whole point of, of emailing is to get a re positive response. You don't want to send them to like a, a link or anything. So, because what will happen is they'll click the link and they'll look around your site or something, but then they won't actually reply to you. You want to have, just like on a landing page, you want to have one call to action with everything that you do, whether you're on in the sales process, one call to action, you know, on a sales call. If you're on a contact form, one call to action on a landing page, one call to action. In a, in a cold email, you don't want to have more than one call to action. So you don't want to have, a, um, you don't want to ask somebody a question about talking and then also send them a, a link to a website because they're either going to click the link or they're going to respond. Um, you don't even want to ask two questions. You only want to have one question mark per email. So that's like the golden rule. Um, Maybe not the golden rule of cold email, but it's definitely a rule. So don't do that. But once you're ready to go, all you have to do is click this button right here, activate recipients, and your emails will be good to go. They'll be scheduled. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, I am not actually sending this out. Um, but that's how you use MixMax. And then what will happen is your emails will be sent out to these people, um, staggered over time, you know, as... Um, They'll go out like every few minutes, they'll send out an email and they'll all be sent out and then it will automatically follow up for you and you can track the stats of the cold emails uh, just by looking here after they're done. It will show you the stats from each campaign. So overall, I had an 84% open rate here, 20% response rate, 0% bounce rate. So pretty good campaign. First email I sent got a very good open rate, three replies. Second one got two replies. Third one got four replies. Fourth one had no replies, and the fifth one had one reply. So the majority of the replies came from the follow-up emails, which is why you wanna follow up. I made a video about that. Um, and then you can track your campaigns and improve them based on performance here. But that's how that's how I use Mixmax. I really like Mixmax. Um, the only thing Mixmax doesn't have is a warm-up feature, which you can get with Lemlist. Um, GMAS has a free one. So, but overall, I like Mixmax a lot, and I think it's good value for the money. So that's how I send my cold emails. That's how you can too. I hope you got some value from this video. And if you want me to help you with your cold email campaigns via consulting, or I can do it for you with X27, you can click the link below to apply for a call, and we'll see if we can work together. And don't forget about the lead generation training document down below as well. If you're still here, it's been almost 20 minutes, smash the like button. It really helps out with this channel. I would really appreciate it if you could do that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.